How we doing, guys? Your boy, fully vaccinated, coming at you. We got some delicious food here coming up for you. I hope you're ready for a wonderful time uh, from the Costas Family Restaurant, place right around the corner from, from my little place. You know, it's a stone's throw, if you will. Stone in the hand is worth a stone in the bush, but why don't we get it popping? So, what we got here is some fine, authentic Greek food. Now, I may pronounce these differently than you would, but I assure you that the way I'm pronouncing them is 100% correct. So what we have here is a little dip, uh, you know, it, it's a little dippy type thing. It's, uh, it's red. It's, uh, it's called Tiro Cafeteri. Uh, it kind of sounds like cafeteria, but I promise you it's better than any cafeteria food you're going to have in your life, let me tell you. Uh, well, I actually don't know that. I haven't tasted it yet. Um, but that's going to be a red pepper type dip with some olive oil and feta cheese. And there's some good stuff and some good little peaty peaties, some little peaty boys ready for you to do your dippings. And those are crispy. Those are nice and those are nice and chewy and crispy. Additionally, they give us a lot of food, but we got some clammy chowds. You know, the old clammy chowds. I'm trying not to spill all over my desk. Now that's going to be delicious, I'm sure. And then we got the P de Resistance. The P de Resistance. We got a Greek potato. Now, that doesn't mean that this potato was made in Greece. It means that the way it's made is Greek in nature. Uh, and then we also have what's called uh, Masaka. And uh, that's eggplant. Uh, it's got some ground beef, a cheese, bechamel, sauce. Delicioso, let me tell you. Uh, and then we also have a piece of the Hero Dinner. The gyro dinner, sorry, the gyro dinner. Uh, that's got uh, a ground beef and lamb mixture uh, atop a pita bread. The pita wasn't big enough for me to fit everything on there as like you would want to for, for a gyro uh, sandwich, you know, kind of style. So I'm going to have to almost eat it like a flatbread pizza. We'll do what we got to do. Um, but let's get started. This was technically my appetizer. So we're going to go ahead and kick it off with the tyro cafteri. Everybody, go ahead, take a delicious look there. It looks scrumptedly umptious. Mmm. 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 Excellent. The pita bread is unbelievable. You know, I gotta say... That's some of the best dip I've had in a long time, especially some dip that you would dip some dippy bread in. Um, I give the Tyro Caft Harry, um, I probably give that anywhere between four and five out of all the pillars on the Parthenon. Um, it's going to sound bad because there's a lot of pillars in the Parthenon, so it sounds like I'm giving it a low score. But you gotta remember the value of a pillar of the Parthenon. It's very valuable. It's an ancient monument, and those things are absolutely priceless. So, four to five pillars out of the, all the pillars in the Parthenon, um, and it's absolutely delicious. It's got a wonderful, almost almost a little spicy to it. It's got some cherry pepper in there. There's a, it's very oily, which means it's gonna make me nice and uh, nice and blubbery, which is exactly what you want from food. Um, then we have the clam chowder, so we're gonna go ahead, uh, go ahead, take a little, take a little bitey bite of that, uh, a little drinky sip, a little, uh, little good stuff. I'm not normally a clam chowder guy, uh, you know, uh, I, I wasn't born in Massachusetts, where this, that's traditionally the only place they eat this stuff, so. Okay, okay. Now, I'm not gonna lie, let me get, let me get one more tea, see if I can get a little bit of, maybe I can get some of the clam. You, some of you, you might want to eat clam, some of you might not want to eat clam, that's up to you. Clam is a personal preference. This is underwhelming. I'm not super impressed with the clam chowder. Um, the other option for me to get was lentil soup. That may have been a little bit better, but I, I think if I had to, if I had to give this a score, which to be honest with you, I don't really know that it deserves a score because there's an implication that to get a score on my list, you have to be in the echelons of fantabulous food. Uh, but I'd say I I'd probably get this like three keys on a keyboard 
two keys on a keyboard it would i would never order this again um it's a little watery i, I don't get a lot of seafood like you know, clamminess it is nice and thick but it's not thick enough like clam chowder i almost want to have to peel it off my walls like i want it to be thicker than a bowl of oatmeal um yeah thicker than a bowl of oatmeal so but let's get to the the main the main course the good stuff so we're gonna start with a piece of this greek patati uh, and that's how you got to say them when you order them from a Greek restaurant. You want to say patati because uh, that is actually Greek for potato. A uh, little known fact. So here's your Greek patati and uh, your patati. Let me uh, allow the focus for the camera here. It's not going to do it. So this is, uh, it's got lemon and oregano and uh, there's something else, the way they cook it, that makes it Greek. Uh, like I said, they don't grow it in Greece. They should though. Hmm. Mmm. This is very good. It's very tender. But my one complaint is it's a little bit too lemony. A little bit too lemony snicket. But still very good. I don't get a lot of the oregano. Who doesn't love potatoes? So the potatoes are great because everybody loves a patati. A little patootie patati patootie. Uh, but this is not quite really what i'm looking for I, I i don't know that i would prefer a regular baked potato but i think there's a lot of things maybe some chips uh but chips don't really go with the the masuki that i got here so i i think it, it's a good potato but it's it's nothing to write home about it's certainly better than the clam chowder let me tell you that uh i probably give this one one out of two uh, doses of the pfizer vaccine uh pfizer being the inferior vaccine to moderna uh, based on no scientific fact that i have whatsoever uh so because of that, it's only one or two doses, so it's not fully vaccinated, but uh, at least it's, it's, uh, it's doing its part to try and protect other people around it. So, uh, overall, okay potato. I wouldn't recommend 100% unless they took a little bit of the lemony, lemony snicket, a series of unfortunate events. Maybe take a couple pages out of that book out of there. You know what I mean? So, now we got the moussaka, the, the moussi aka. And I'm excited for this because it looks delicious and it smells absolutely incredible. So we're going to go ahead and take our first bite. I've never had this before. Mmm. Mmm. This is phenomenal. This is incredible. The beef is seasoned absolutely perfectly. Um, it, it's, it's... Quite frankly, it's sublime. Mm. Wow. The cheese bechamel sauce. Uh, I've never had a bechamel quite like this bechamel. It's it's very thick, though. Like, this is like borderline mashed potato. Like, this is... You gotta, you gotta scrape this off your walls. Like, this is a little bit thicker than I'd want my clammy chowds, but... This is incredible. There's some onions in here, too. Ooh, this is delicious. I could eat this all day. And I just might. There's actually more where this came from. That's how incredible it is. Now, before we move on to what is actually the main dish proper... Oh, I forgot to give this a rating. That's why, you know, you, you get moments like these when you're doing everything in one take. Um, I'd say that if I had to give this... Moosey Kaka, a rating, I'd have to say at least, maybe even four, three, maybe even four Trident points on Poseidon's Trident. I, I'd say we're definitely at a three out of three, perfect Trident score, maybe even a four out of three beyond perfect Trident. Like, that's, it's a quadrant. And I think this, this transcends being a Trident and turns into a quadrant. That's how good it is. Um, it's absolutely phenomenal. And I cannot thank Costas Family Restaurant enough for making this delicious dish for me. But before we move on to our wonderful gyro dinner, don't forget your palate cleanses. We went over this in some previous episodes, but you need your palate cleanses. It's very crucial. And the pita bread is the perfect palate cleanser. As much as I want to dip it in that, that Tarot Kaftari, I can't do it. I gotta, I gotta keep the show pure. I gotta keep my motives pure. And I gotta keep 
my tongue virgin, if you will. Alright. So let's go ahead. Now we've cleansed our palette. I'm going to attempt to lift this up to allow the folks at home to view what I'm seeing because it's very beautiful. And it shouldn't be too hard to take a bite out of because pita bread while chewy does flake a pop pretty easily. Um, we also have some of that tzatziki sauce on here. I do want to get a little taste of that just on its own. Hmm, delicious. I mean, it's tzatziki sauce. You can't go wrong with it. I'm not going to rate that. Uh, I'm not a big fan of rating sauces on their own. Uh, you can go to the sauce idiot for that one, but we can talk about him later. All right. Oh, sorry. You probably want to see it. Look at this beautiful. This is the ground steak. Well, ground beef. A uh, beef steak, same animal. The ground beef and lamb uh, made into these little patties. They are wonderfully scented because they've probably been seasoned to complete perfection. Uh, but you got some latas, which I'm not a huge fan of. In fact, I'm going to take that piece off. But we got a tomato, uh, some feta cheese, some red onions. Let's go ahead and get it popping. Mm. I gotta say, this really just comes together in a way like very few other sandwiches tend to. The, the Grecos really know how to make this stuff. I don't know what they do. Let me go ahead. I want to get a piece of this. I want to get a piece right here. A little piece of the uh, the, the little the lamb and beef mixture. I'm going to get that just by itself. Just a little. Just a little. Very high with my underbite to make that happen. But you make sacrifices for your folks at home. That's beautiful. It's crispy. It's seasoned. It's juicy. It's everything you want. It has all the textures. It has all the flavorings of a perfect piece of meat. So, I'm actually going to take another bite. I want to kind of get into this. I'm going to drag a little onion over here because I want to I wanna get some onion flavor in this next bite. Mm. Great sandwich. Great fucking sandwich. Oh. Sorry for the language. I hope your kids aren't watching. This isn't a kid-friendly show. But this is phenomenal. Um, the everything blends together. Uh, the 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 acidity and both the um, the fattiness of the tzatziki sauce. Um. You know, because you, you get a little lemon juice in there and you get the yogurt, you know, that kind of, it makes for a wonderful flavor collection on your palat. That mixes very well with the, with the meat and the tomato, which also adds its own little bit of acidity. It's a good temperature. The pita is the perfect base for a sandwich. I would argue it is second only to everything rolls, everything seasoned submarine rolls. Um, but the, the pita is, these are some phenomenal pitas. And I think the pita's on their own in a moment. I'm going to give them a rating because they're excellent. They're very good. But the hero, the only demera I have, and this is more of a fault on the restaurant than it is on the food itself uh they gave me two small pitas i want to hold it like a sandwich i don't want to I, I don't actually believe that open face sandwiches are sandwiches the pizza the 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 uncooked pizza it's raw pizza that's what an open face sandwich is it's a raw pizza and this this is delicious but i don't want to eat a raw pizza gyro so i have to kind of give it a few demerits for that one but I think overall, um, I would give this probably 72 out of 80 lightning bolts fired by Zeus from the clouds. Uh, and it may seem like I'm I'm going with some very stereotypical ratings uh, because it's Greek food. Uh, but that's because uh, I know too much Greek mythology that I would care to admit. So uh, we're going with that. Uh, so the I give this 72 out of 80 lightning bolts fired from Zeus from the clouds. Um, you know, it loses two lightning bolts for being uh, a little bit colder than I would have liked. Uh, I do want it a little hot. Uh, it loses the remaining lightning bolts, the other six for the pita. I I'm a big fan of having enough surface area to put your meat on. Uh, I love having surface area for my meat. But I think overall, the only thing left to rate is this wonderful 
pita, this pita, and I'm gonna give it another taste so I really know, I really know, I really know, just, just what I'm tasting. It's chewy. It's got these wonderful sea marks on it. They're incredible. Mmm. Five out of six drachmas. No question. Again, the only demerit there is one, they're losing one drachma. Uh, just because I'm not a, again, cold pita. I could have heated this up. But that's extra work I got to do. If I'm, you know, I don't, I don't want to do extra work. So anyways, thank you all for watching. I really enjoyed Custis Family Restaurant. Um, the wonderful place on Hurdle Lab up in Buffalo. Uh, thank you for coming today. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and follow my videos. They suck, but I hope they make you have a good time. Uh, so, you know, go ahead, leave a comment. Tell me what your favorite Greek food is. And uh, if you're familiar with the Buffalo area, tell me where you think my stupid ass should go next. Uh, otherwise, I will see you on the next episode of The Food Idiot. And don't forget... We're starting a new series, the trailers, that will come two weeks after every episode. So go ahead and stop by this channel in 14 days, and you'll find the trailer for the next episode. Take care.